Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create luminosity masks. And this technique is great for when you have, let's say, a dark foreground object and a light background object. So here was my original image. And as you can see, this building is very dark, but the sky is pretty bright here. So what the luminosity mask does is it separates all of the dark channels from the light channels. And then you can edit all those channels separately and create a more balanced image like this final image here. Now here is what my image looked like when I just edited everything all at the same time. So it still looks pretty decent, but it's not quite as good of a final result in my opinion. And uh, you're sort of color balancing and brightening parts of the image all at once when they should really be edited separately. So I'll go ahead and hide this what I call the full edit method because you're editing the full image at once. And here is the luminosity method. Now apart from just brightening something up in your image, you can also do things like split toning which allows you to sort of inject various colors within different parts of the image. So let's say you want your darks to have more blues in them, you can do that using this method as well as just making any other alterations on a separate channel. Before I get into all that, of course, I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials. We have tons of video and text tutorials on here as always, so definitely check those out. You can also enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to this as well as a link to our Udemy course and all of the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So we'll come over here to our base image and you can open an image by going to file open and selecting the image from your computer. And the first thing I'm going to do is click on here and go to image, precision and change this to 32 bit floating point and I'm just going to set the gamma to linear light and hit convert. That's really just going to add a little bit more data to our image and make the final product look a little bit better. And then you'll see this is a pretty large image here so I'm going to go to image scale image and just scale this down to 1920 by 1280 and click scale. And by the way, I kept the resolution there at 72 pixels per inch. You could change that to uh, 300 pixels per inch right here if you want to print this. Uh, but if you're going to use this for the web, you can keep this at 72 pixels per inch. I'll grab my zoom tool and zoom in and grab my move tool again. And now I'm just going to rename this layer Union Station. That's what this photo is of. And I'll duplicate this main layer. Click on that duplicated layer. And now I'm going to go to Colors, Desaturate, and I'll choose Desaturate. Make sure the mode here is set to Luminance. And what this is doing is just turning our image into a black and white image. And I'll click OK. Now with this black and white image, what we can do is uh, come over here to our channels. And what I want to do is create three light channels, which we're going to edit on, and then three dark channels. And then you can also do three mid-tone channels, and I'll show you briefly how to do that. Uh, but all we have to do is drag one of these channels over. So in this case, I'll do blue. And it doesn't matter which one you drag over because they're all the same at this point since it is a black and white image right now. Just make sure you click on this blue again or whatever layer that you dragged over to uh, reactivate that. Otherwise, when you're making adjustments later, it's going to throw off the color. But now I'll come over here to our newly created channel, click on this and name this L. And so this will be our light channel. And now we can use this channel to start creating our darker channels. And these channels are separating the lighter elements from the darker. And so what this channel is doing is it's making all of our dark elements shades of black and gray. And then all of our light elements are sort of shades of white. And you'll see that there's going to be more of a difference as we add uh, the different levels here of lightness and darkness. So the next step is to go to select all and that's going to select your entire image. Right click on this light channel here and go to subtract from selection and that's going to subtract all the light parts of the image. Then come over to select, save to channel and that's going to save this current selection area to a new channel. And this will be our dark so we're going to rename this D for darks. And a good way to understand this is to think of these as layer masks. And for those of you who have watched my previous tutorials, you'll remember that a layer mask is going to block out all of the black in a layer mask. And so it's going to hide or mask everything that is colored black. Whereas everything that is white is going to represent full opacity or it's going to make that layer mask clear on those areas or see through. So in this case, the darks in our layer mask, our hypothetical layer mask, are represented as white. 
So that's why the dark channel here has more whites in it, and then the light channel has more darks in it because it's masking out these black colors here. Now what we wanna do is create another channel where it's going to represent the even darker parts of our image. So to do that, we'll keep the selection area, we'll come back to our lights, right click, and go to subtract from selection, and that will further subtract more of the light areas from that previous dark channel. Then I'll go to select, save to channel, and we'll name this DD. And you'll see that this channel now is slightly different than the one above. And it's got a little bit more black in it because it's masking out a little bit more of those lights. And then we'll do that one more time. So we'll click on here, right click, go to subtract from selection. And now you'll have even less of a selection area. And we'll go to select, save to channel, and we'll name this triple D. So now we've got our dark darker and darkest. So now I want to create our lighter and lightest channel. So we already have our light channel, remember. And so to do that, uh, we're going to come to our first light channel, right click and go to channel to selection. That'll select all of our lights on this channel. And I'll come over to our darks and right click and go to subtract from selection. And that'll subtract all of the darks out of that channel, leaving just the slightly lighter elements. And now I can go to select save to channel and this you'll see is a, a much darker channel and i'm just going to double click on this and name this ll so that'll represent our lighter elements and then i'll do this one more time so I'll click on our d layer right click and go to subtract from selection and now there's even less selected here and that's because this is basically the brightest parts of our image then i'll go to select save to channel and we'll name this triple l so now we have all of our dark, darker, and darkest channels, and then our light, lighter, lightest channels. So we'll go to select none. So let's say now we want to create mid-tone channels, and I'm just going to show you how to do one of these just for the sake of time. But all we have to do is come over to our dark channel, right click, and go to channel to selection. And then I'll come over to the corresponding light channel, right click, and go to intersect with selection. And it's going to look like nothing is selected, but if I go to select, save to channel, this is going to save all of our midtones here. And I can rename this M for midtones. And you can repeat this for the double D, double L layer. So right click on one of these, go to channel to selection, right click on here, go to intersect with selection, and then go to select, save to channel. And this will be our, uh, I guess you could call it our even more mid-tone mid-tones. I'm not sure how else to describe that. And then you could do the same for your triple L and triple D. I'm gonna skip that now for time, but I think you guys get the point. So now we'll come back over here to our layers and I'll hide that grayscale layer that we created, the desaturated layer. And now what I wanna do is duplicate our main image layer six times. And if you went through all of the mid-tone layers and you created three mid-tones, you would have nine layers here if you wanted to edit all of those, but we're just gonna stick with the lighter and darker channels for now. And so I'll come over here and duplicate this one, two, three, four, five, six times. And then I'm gonna create a layer group and I'll name this darks. And I'm gonna click off of that layer group, click to create a new layer group and name this lights. And I can actually just delete this entirely because we don't need it anymore. And now I'm just going to drag three of each of these copies into the different layer groups. And this is just helping us stay organized. Now once you've done that, we'll come over here and rename these. So this one will be our dark. This will be our darker. And this will be our darkest layer. And this will make sense in a second. And then I'll do this for the lights. So here's our light. And make sure you delete the word copy. So lighter. I'm gonna come back up here and delete this copy. And then here will be our lightest. All right, so these are going to be the layers that we're gonna edit. And so now we have to add layer masks to all of these that correspond to the channels we created over here. So come over here to our first one, right click and go to add layer mask. Under initialize layer mask two, select channel, and then choose the corresponding letter. So I'll go with D for the Union Station D, and this is gonna represent our darks. So I'll click Add. I'll go to the next one, right click, Add Layer Mask, and I'll select Double D, which is our darkers. And then right click on here, 
add layer mask, and this is the darkest. And so we'll do the same here, right click, add layer mask, we'll choose light, click add, right click, add layer mask, under channel choose the double L, which is the lighter, and then add layer mask, triple L for the lightest. So this is pretty much the setup for the luminosity mask, and you can do this for the midtones as well, but again, I'm just skipping that for now. So now I'm gonna start making adjustments to these, and I'm gonna start with my darks, because I wanna lighten up this area here. And I'm gonna do a series of corrections on all of these layers. So I'm gonna do brightness contrast, levels, curves. Uh, for the darker ones, I'll do the shadows, highlights, adjustment. Then I'll do a color balance, and then I'll adjust the saturation. So I've got like six total adjustments I'm gonna make to each of these probably about five for these because I'm not going to do the shadows highlights most likely for these. Um, so we'll go ahead and start with the top layer here, go to colors, brightness contrast, and you'll see when I turn this up that the uh, brightness of this building is going to drastically improve. I don't want to overdo it because it does still affect the sky a little bit and if I overdo it the sky is going to start to get a little bit blown out. But I do want to adjust this so it is a little brighter and I'll click OK. And I'll come down here to the next one and do the same thing. So colors, brightness, contrast. And this one doesn't affect the sky quite as much. This is more so just the darker parts of the building. But it's still affecting the sky. So before, after. So same principle. We don't want to overdo it. Then I'll go to colors, brightness, contrast. And this is for the very darkest parts of our image. And I'll leave that there for now. So now I'll go to Colors, Levels, and we'll adjust the levels here. And so again, this dark layer is going to be affected the most because it is covering more of the uh, image. And for you guys that don't know, the Levels tool has three triangles here. Each represent a different part of the image. So we've got the darkest part, which is the shadows or the black arrow. The gray arrow is the midtones, and the white arrow is the highlights. And when you drag the black arrow further to the right, you're adding more uh, black pixels into the image, which is basically going to make your image darker. And then over here, when you drag this white arrow to the left, it's adding more white pixels, which is making it a lighter image. And there is a bit of a balance to this, so you're not always just dragging one of the arrows. You're often adjusting all of the arrows to try to get the right look. And I'll go ahead and hit OK there. And we're just going to do the same thing to all three of these layers. So just adjust the levels here. This layer won't be affected as much. Same with this one. So we'll go to colors, levels. And we'll click OK. So here's a before and an after. You can already see this is getting much brighter. And now we'll do the curve. So we'll go to colors, curves. And we'll click to create a point in the middle of this curve. And we're going to create an S curve. And what that's going to do is add some contrast to our image. And that's a general photography principle that I talk about a lot. So I'm just clicking in the middle of this curve and bringing it up. Clicking in the middle of this one, bringing it down. And that's creating this S shape here. And so here's a before and an after. So you'll see that uh, this S curve creates contrast. And I'll click OK. Now, if you want to just apply the same S curve to every layer, you can just go to filters, repeat curves, and same here, filters, repeat curves, and that kind of speeds things up. Now we're going to adjust the shadows and highlights, and that's going to help recover some of the details out of the shadows here. So we'll go to colors, shadows, highlights, and we'll crank the shadows up, and you'll start to see parts of uh, what's inside the shadows here coming out, so some of the details coming out. Don't want to overdo this as, uh, as per usual. And then we can drag some of the highlights down. That's going to uh, help decrease some of the blowing out of the sky that has happened over here. So I've got that around 50 right now. And then the white point adjustment is just sort of adjusting the number of white pixels in the image overall, or in this case, in this channel. And so you can see here's a before. So we've recovered a lot of details out of these shadows here. Here's an after to see what that looks like. And I'll click OK. And again, you can go to filters, repeat shadows and highlights if you want to just apply those same shadows and highlight settings to all three layers, or you can go in individually and make those adjustments. So here's a before and here's an after. 
And so this building looks a lot brighter now. And so now I'm just going to add saturation to this. So I'll go to colors, saturation, and we'll turn the saturation up and that's going to help bring out some of the vibrancy of these colors or the intensity of the colors. So I'll do about there, click OK. And then I'll do the same for all these other layers. So color, saturation, bring this up. Don't want to overdo it. And I'll click OK. And then we'll do it for the darkest layers here. And I'll click OK. All right, the last thing I'm going to do is color balance each of these. So I'll go to colors, color balance. And we'll just see how we can make some adjustments here. The colors actually look pretty decent as is. Looks like we can add a little bit of red here. And you can just play around with this. And uh, the final color balance is going to depend on how you want your final image to look. Just the colors in general, that can be sort of your preference. But I'm just going to try to balance these colors out a little bit um, so that the blues and the reds kind of play off each other and there's not too much green or yellow going on as well. And I'm also keeping an eye on the sky because that is affected a little bit here. And I'll click OK. So I'm not going to color balance these other two layers just for the sake of time, but uh, you guys get the point on that. Now I'm going to move on to my lights layers. So these adjustments are going to be a little bit different just because uh, the nature of what we're adjusting. The colors are different. It's not as dark as our building was, and uh, we're just going for a different effect here. And we don't want to blow these highlights out either. So the main thing I want to do is just sort of enhance the clouds here. And so separating these channels really helps us do that because we don't have to worry about what's going on with the building because for the most part, uh, everything we're doing on these channels is only affecting uh, the sky. It is going to affect the building to some degree, but not majorly. So I'll click on this and go to colors, brightness contrast, and we can adjust the brightness of our sky here. And you can see our clouds are really starting to look much whiter and brighter. And I'll just do the same down the line. You can also just filters repeat uh, for these two if you want to save time. So here's before and here's after. You can tell our sky is a lot brighter and it's not really affecting the building at all. And then I'll go to colors and go to levels. And you can make adjustments to these levels if you want. Uh, this doesn't really appear to be having much of an effect on this, uh, but I've made some slight adjustments here and I'll click OK. And again, I'll just repeat the levels filter for both of these to save time. And then you can also add a little contrast with the curves. So I'll go to Colors, Curves, click in the middle here, and drag this curve down a little bit and drag this one up a little bit. And that should create a little bit of contrast. So here's a before and an after. And I'll click OK. And I'm just going to repeat these filters for these other two layers. And then I'm going to go to Colors, saturation and just turn up some of the saturation here to bring out some of that sky blue here. And then we can just repeat that saturation filter for the brights and the brightest parts of our image. And then we can come back up to the top and go to colors, color balance, and adjust some of the colors here of our sky. And this has just allowed us to add a little bit of blue to the sky. And I'll click OK. And so here's a before and here is an after. And so our sky is brighter without being blown out. And then we've also added a bit of blue to the sky. So the sky has a nice sky blue color now. So I can control shift and click on this uh, original image here. I'm clicking on the show hide icon here. And so here's before this building is super dark and the sky is uh, brighter than the building, but it's not looking too vibrant. And then if I control shift and click on this show hide icon again, you can see now our building is much brighter. We brought out the colors with the saturation and we've also um, edited the sky and made that brighter and more vibrant as well. If I come over here to our original and I show you the full method, 
Here's a comparison of the method we just used and here's the full method. You can see that the building looks uh, not quite as good color wise. You know, we were able to really keep some of the color here without it turning too yellow or anything. And also the sky here doesn't look nearly as vibrant as the sky in this photo. And I haven't even added the unsharp mask yet, so let me do that real quick. I'll come up here to the top layer. So I'll come back up here and go to filters, enhance, unsharp mask. And I'm just gonna turn this setting down to just uh, 0.5. And then I'm going to turn the scale down to about three. And the scale really just uh, determines the strength of the uh, unsharp mask. And then the standard deviation kind of determines the shape of the unsharp mask itself. And so this should sharpen up our image a little bit. And I'm just gonna come down the line and repeat the unsharp mask on all of our layers here. All right, so we'll do one last before and after. Now, if you wanted to export this image, all you gotta do is go to File, Export As, and you could save this as whatever file type you want. Uh, for instance, I'll come down here to JPEG. I just click the Select File Type drop down here. And then you can come up here and rename this. And then go ahead and click Export. And then you can adjust the quality here. I'll turn this all the way up to 100, and I'll click Export again. And there you go. So that's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. You can also visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials. And you can enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And I'll include a link to that as well as a link to our Patreon page and all of the relevant links from this tutorial in the description. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.